Napoleon Bonaparte, the emperor of the French and one of the greatest commanders in history. He began his first military campaign against the Austrians and their Italian allies, scoring a series of decisive victories and becoming a national hero, building a large empire that ruled over continental Europe before its final collapse in 1815. And today we'll talk about five reasons that led him to defeat during his rule. Constant Wars Napoleon's policy in the first years of his reign enjoyed the support of the population, not only the owners, but also the poor. The revival of the economy led to an increase in wages, which was also facilitated by constant recruitment into the army. Napoleon looked like the savior of the fatherland. Wars caused a national upsurge and victories, a sense of pride. Napoleon Bonaparte was a man of the revolution, and the marshals around him, brilliant military leaders, sometimes came from the bottom. But gradually, the people began to get tired of the war, and army recruitment began to cause discontent. In 1810, an economic crisis broke out again, which did not stop until 1815. Wars in the vast expanses of Europe were losing their meaning. The costs of them began to irritate the bourgeoisie. Constant replenishment of military units, and the war on several fronts, exhausted France. The shortage of people, horses and resources began to arise already at the end of the Sixth Anti-French Coalition. Too many enemies. Despite the fact that Napoleon was involved in many conflicts, he still remained the main force on the European continent. But his desire to rule alone in Europe destroyed the French Empire, betraying perhaps his only ally Spain, and unleashing a war against Russia. He was slowly walking towards his total defeat, since the war in Spain turned into a partisan war, where Britain also landed. Well, in Russia, the Great Army was completely destroyed. In 1814, against Napoleon were Great Britain, Russia, Prussia, Austria, Sweden, Spain, Portugal and some German states. In this coalition, French forces were completely outnumbered. The Continental Blockade As a response to the naval blockade of the French coasts enacted by the British government on 16 May 1806, Napoleon issued the Berlin Decree on 21 November 1806, which brought into effect a large-scale embargo against British trade. The embargo was applied intermittently. Ending on the 11th of April 1814 after Napoleon's first abdication, the blockade caused little economic damage to the UK, although British exports to the continent dropped from 55% to 25% between 1802 and 1806. As Napoleon realized that extensive trade was going through Spain and Russia, he invaded those two countries. His forces were tied down in Spain, in which the Spanish War of Independence was occurring simultaneously, and suffered severely in and ultimately retreated from Russia in 1812. The Berlin Decree forbade the import of British goods into any European countries allied with or dependent upon France, and it installed the continental system in Europe. All connections with Britain were to be cut, even the mail. British merchants smuggled in many goods and the continental system was not a powerful weapon of economic war. There was some damage to British trade, especially in 1808 and 1812, but British control of the oceans led to replacement trade with North and South America, as well as large-scale smuggling in Europe. The loss of Britain as a trading partner also hit the economies of France and its allies. Angry governments gained an incentive to ignore the continental system, which led to the weakening of Napoleon's coalition. Peninsular War The settlements at Tilsit gave Napoleon time to organize his empire. One of his major objectives became enforcing the continental system against the British forces. He decided to focus his attention on the Kingdom of Portugal, which consistently violated his trade prohibitions. After defeat in the War of the Oranges in 1801, Portugal adopted a double-sided policy. At first, John VI agreed to close his ports to British trade. The situation changed dramatically after the Franco-Spanish defeat at Trafalgar. John grew bolder and officially resumed diplomatic and trade relations with Britain. Unhappy with this change of policy by the Portuguese government, Napoleon negotiated a secret treaty with Charles IV of Spain and sent an army to invade Portugal. On 17 October 1807, 24,000 French troops under General Junot crossed the Pyrenees with Spanish cooperation and headed towards Portugal to enforce Napoleon's orders. This attack was the first step in what would eventually become the Peninsular War, a six-year struggle that significantly sapped French strength. Throughout the winter of 1808, French agents became increasingly involved in Spanish internal affairs, attempting to incite discord between members of the Spanish royal family. On 16 February 1808, 
Secret French machinations finally materialized when Napoleon announced that he would intervene to mediate between the rival political factions in the country. Marshal Muret led 120,000 troops into Spain. The French arrived in Madrid on the 24th of March, where wild riots against the occupation erupted just a few weeks later. Napoleon appointed his brother, Joseph Bonaparte, as the new king of Spain in the summer of 1808. The appointment enraged a heavily religious and conservative Spanish population. Resistance to French aggression soon spread throughout Spain. The shocking French defeats at the Battle of Bailen and the Battle of Vimiro gave hope to Napoleon's enemies and partly persuaded the French emperor to intervene in person. But, after Austria declared war on French empire during the Fifth Coalition, Napoleon would end up leaving Iberia in order to deal with the Austrians in Central Europe. But the Peninsular War continued on long after his absence. He never returned to Spain after the 1808 campaign, several months after Corona. The British sent another army to the peninsula under the future Duke of Wellington. The war then settled into a complex and asymmetric strategic deadlock where all sides struggled to gain the upper hand. The highlight of the conflict became the brutal guerrilla warfare that engulfed much of the Spanish countryside. Both sides committed the worst atrocities of the Napoleonic Wars during this phase of the conflict. Russian Invasion in 1808, Napoleon and Tsar Alexander met at the Congress of Erfurt to preserve the Russo-French alliance. The leaders had a friendly personal relationship after their first meeting at Tilsit in 1807. By 1811, however, tensions had increased and Alexander was under pressure from the Russian nobility to break off the alliance. A major strain on the relationship between the two nations became the regular violations of the continental system by the Russians, which led Napoleon to threaten Alexander with serious consequences if he formed an alliance with Britain. By 1812, advisors to Alexander suggested the possibility of an invasion of the French Empire and the recapture of Poland. On receipt of intelligence reports on Russia's war preparations, Napoleon expanded his Grand Army to more than 450,000 men. He ignored repeated advice against an invasion of the Russian heartland and prepared for an offensive campaign. On the 24th of June 1812 the invasion commenced. In an attempt to gain increased support from Polish nationalists and patriots, Napoleon termed the war the Second Polish War. The First Polish War had been the Bar Confederation uprising by Polish nobles against Russia in 1768. Polish patriots wanted the Russian part of Poland to be joined with the Duchy of Warsaw, and an independent Poland created. This was rejected by Napoleon, who stated he had promised his ally Austria this would not happen. Napoleon refused to manumit the Russian serfs because of concerns this might provoke a reaction in his army's rear. The serfs later committed atrocities against French soldiers during France's retreat. The Russians avoided Napoleon's objective of a decisive engagement and instead retreated deeper into Russia. A brief attempt at resistance was made at Smolensk in August. The Russians were defeated in a series of battles, and Napoleon resumed his advance. The Russians again avoided battle, although in a few cases this was only achieved because Napoleon uncharacteristically hesitated to attack when the opportunity arose. Owing to the Russian army's scorched-earth tactics, the French found it increasingly difficult to forage food for themselves and their horses. The Russians eventually offered battle outside Moscow on the 7th of September. The Battle of Borodino resulted in approximately 44,000 Russian and 35,000 French dead wounded or captured, and may have been the bloodiest day of battle in history up to that point in time. Although the French had won, the Russian army had accepted, and withstood, the major battle Napoleon had hoped would be decisive. Napoleon's own account was, The most terrible of all my battles was the one before Moscow. The French showed themselves to be worthy of victory, but the Russians showed themselves worthy of being invincible. The Russian army withdrew and retreated past Moscow. Napoleon entered the city. Assuming its fall would end the war and Alexander would negotiate peace. However, on orders of the city's governor Fedor Rostopchin, rather than capitulation, Moscow was burned. After five weeks, Napoleon and his army left. In early November Napoleon became concerned about the loss of control back in France after the Mallet Coup of 1812. His army walked through snow up to their knees, and nearly 10,000 men and horses froze to death on the night of eight divided by the 9th of November alone. After the Battle of Berezina Napoleon managed to escape but had to abandon much of the remaining artillery and baggage train. On the 5th of December, shortly before arriving in Vilnius, Napoleon left the army in a sledge. The French suffered in the course of a ruinous retreat, including from the harshness of the Russian winter. The army had begun as over 400,000 frontline troops, with fewer than 40,000 crossing the Berezina River in November 1812. The Russians had lost 150,000 soldiers in battle and hundreds of thousands of civilians. That's all. Thank you for watching this video. 
Write your opinion in the comments. Have a good mood and goodbye.